so thank you Sue and Carol I really uh, thought those colors went well together here is our next card it is part of the hydrangea haven suite with gorgeous grape and highland heather so I'm going to get out my pieces out of my basket and we'll get started this one is probably going to be a little bit faster so there is a sheet in the DSP that goes with the hydrangea set that has all these little bunches of flowers so what I did was I cut some out to use on this card there's not a die, so you can either use uh, scissors and fussy cut them, or I have a brother scan and cut, and so I use that to cut some out for today's because it would be faster. Although it was a new mat and the, it was very sticky and the paper stuck to it like crazy, so I think that maybe it took me longer. I would have done better to just go ahead and fussy cut instead of take a shortcut. So. I'm going to fold this card base in half. Use my bone folder. And look at isn't this pretty? All this paper is so pretty I can never decide what side to use. Okay, so I'm just going to add some mono adhesive back here on this. And slip it on here and hold it up here so I can be sure that I have it straight then I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to fold it back like this and I'm going to use my bone folder to crease it and you have to really put some pressure on now because you're creasing the cardstock and the DSP. So, and it lays there pretty well, but just to be sure, I'm just going to put a drop of mono adhesive behind it to hold it down. I'm not going to hold it down right away because it has to dry, but it will. Now, you, if you use the regular stamp seal, stamp and seal, it might not hold. You would probably want to use stamp and seal plus, or the mono adhesive, or some tear and stick tape. So I have that. Then I have this two and a half by two and a half square, and I have my words and my ink. I'm gonna get back out my craft mat. There are some things that I just use all the time. The craft mat, the pick a tool. It really is sharp. It's hard to decide on that hydrangea paper. Every side of the paper is just beautiful. So I try to use projects using one side and then a project using the other side. So I'm going to stamp down here, you make me smile. This also is a good card for different occasions. And I just want to let you know I found my leaf to the first card. My leaf died. I knew I would as soon as I finished. But that's okay. They weren't that hard to cut out. And then I'm going to pop up my flowers here. I'm just going to kind of put them on diagonally in this corner. I love to do folds too, Sue. I've done quite a few folds. This is, I don't know if you were on at the beginning where you got to see I'm having a class, April the 9th, it's an online class. I'll put all the information when I finish the video at the top, but this is one of the fun fold cards that you'll be able to make in it. I will send you all the pieces, and it's 
if you put in a $40 order using my hostess code, you get to come to the class for free and I'll send you everything cut and scored. Everything except for anything stamped. So let me, here's my dimensionals again. But if you start the video over, I showed all three cards and the post-it note holder that we're going to make for that online class. If you want to check it out. So we're just going to, oh, I think I almost put that on upside down. I think it looks better, more right side up this way. And then I've already tied my knot, so you didn't have to see me sit here and struggle trying to tie a knot or a bow. One side looks just a little bit bigger than the other side. So this is how I'm going to do this bow. I am going to put a drop of mono adhesive here on my mat. Just a little dot. I could use a glue dot. That would work too. But it's just so little that I don't need a lot. I just need to get some glue on there. And then I'm going to oh, try to make it so it doesn't cover up the words. Okay. I always have trouble with things sticking to my fingers more than I, they stick to the cards. And then there we go. That worked out pretty good. And I was going through my drawers the other day and I found some embellishments that I have from years past that have expired or retired. So my goal is to use them up. So I have these little clear epoxy hearts. And I'm going to use my pick a tool, maybe. You take off a couple and put them on here. I don't know if you can really, I'll hold it up in just a minute. Let me get the three of them on there. You know, when I did this to practice the cards, they came off so easy. They just, whoop. Okay, there's the second one, and now I will get a third one. And it's stuck to my fingers, so now I'm going to hold it up a little bit. I don't know if you can really see them because they kind of blend in with the paper, but they kind of just give it a little texture and a little uh, bling. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to glue, uh, use my mono adhesive. Only on half of it, though, because as you notice, this side of it does not go uh, down. So you want to be sure that you don't get glue over there or you'll be gluing it to the inside of your card. So I'm just going to kind of do some on this side. I might want to do a little bit more. And this one's going to be kind of more at an angle than my first one. But that's okay. It still looks good. Now on the inside, what I did was around the outside of the uh, DSP, there were some that were just half flowers and stuff. So I went ahead and fussy cut them out and just kind of decorated the inside of my card with those. So there we are, finished with number two. One more to go. And it's a fast and easy one. I always like to do something that's fast and easy because every once in a while, an occasion comes up and you need a card fast. So that's what this next card's going to be. Just let me move off everything I'm not going to need for it so that I don't get things mixed together. And for this card, we are going to use the Stamparatus. I don't know if you've ever seen the Stamparatus demonstrated, but here it is. It is a great tool for two-step stamping so that you can get everything exactly placed right. And if you don't get it 
right the first time, you get a second chance at stamping. So we're going to put that piece there and this piece here. And I'm going to show you the card. It is using the art gallery set with a two-toned fl uh, flower and then some leaves and the I'm thinking of you. So that's what we're going to attempt to do now. And my dog has decided that he wants to sit right underneath my desk and tell me that he wants attention. I think I forgot to cut the card front for it, so I'm just going to cut a piece really quick here. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I always think I'm prepared. I try to put everything in a basket when I'm making the cards, and I always end up forgetting at least one thing. So it just wouldn't be right if I had everything right at my fingertips. Okay, so we're going to place our... That's not what we wanted to do. What we wanted... I've got... That's for the front. What we want to do now is do the flower and the leaves because we're going to put them through the mini stamp and boss machine so we can't have them too big. Otherwise, they don't go through. So we're going to just make it be three inches wide. That way, we won't have to hop up and go over to the bigger machine. And I'm going to lay this here, and I'm going to use my magnet to hold it down. Let me get out my inks here. Okay, so for the background, the more solid one, I used Petal Pink. And then I used Flirty Flamingo for the highlights. So I'm going to take my petal pink and I'm going to ink up my stamp up here. Now sometimes when I'm doing that, I get some ink on the plate here. So I just always try to wipe it off. It's not so important today because I'm going to be using the... Uh, dies to cut it out. Okay, so I'm going to stamp down here. And I just kind of give it a good rub to be sure that I get it all on there. And look, I missed the whole top part, but it's okay because it's going to stamp in the exact same spot so I can re-ink. Maybe I missed that spot when I was inking. So I'm going to ink it again and I'm going to put it down and this time I'm going to rub it again. That's the great way we can use the stamp apparatuses so that you can re-stamp until you get the color or the coverage that you like. Now that looks so much better. So over here on this plate I have the highlight color and that is going to be Flirty Flamingo. So again I'm going to ink it up. And with Flirty Flamingo being a darker color, you can see where I got some on the tray or the plate. I just kind of like to wipe that up so I don't actually get it on my paper. And I'm going to move my magnet up here a little bit to be out of the way. I'm going to bring this over. I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to rub. And voila, it lined up almost perfect. So now I'm ready to cut this out. And it was, I just find it so easy for those things. Or if you wanted to do something really black, a really dark color, you could stamp it over and over. Like if you wanted it to be a really dark flamingo pink or flirty flamingo, you could just stamp it two or three times and it will line up perfect every time. Let me get rid of this now. And I'm going to close my ink pads. The 
next thing we're going to do is I have this other sheet of white. I'm going to go ahead and stamp the leaves. That way I can just bring my machine up once. I'll cut out the flower, I'll cut out the leaves. So I have the leaves here on this block, the stem and the leaves. And again, it's a photopolymer, so I'm going to put my mat down. Now some people might not use a mat or anything with their photopolymer. I just find I get a better image when I do. So there we go. We're going to put this ink away. Put the mat up. And we're going to bring up the machine. And here is the flower. Let me find the dies for these. Okay. So first I'm going to do the flower. I'm going to lay it on here. Okay, put my top plate on carefully, hold it tight and send it through. And there we go, one flower. Now we're going to do the stem and leaves. Like I said, I'm so happy that over the last few years, Stampin' Up! really has come a long way with their dies so that we don't have to fussy cut all these things. Because that used to be very time consuming. I'm trying to get this lined up pretty good here. That stem is so skinny, it's kind of hard to see when you have it. Okay. We're going to say, go for it. And we'll see what it's going to look like. Oh, it came out very good. There we go. So now, really, this is the last time we had to use the machine. Because this is our last card. Next, we're going to take the card front, which I cut earlier, which is right here. And we are going to use our new blender brushes, which are just wonderful, and Balmy Blue. And we're just, we're not going to really do this in a pattern or anything. We're kind of just going to put some there in the middle. So I'm going to get some ink on there, and then I, on my scrap paper here, I'm going to get some off because I don't want it really dark. I just want it kind of light. And I'm just going to go around like that. See how pretty these blend? So much easier than the sponge dauber or the sponges. These just glide right over. And when you uh, wash them, all the ink comes right out and they're clean again, ready to use for another color. So there I think I like that. And while I have my blue open, I am going to put the words at the bottom. Now if you notice my words are not straight, I purposely made them be kind of curvy just for a different look. So that's how they're still on the block. Get my mat back. Perhaps I should just always work on my mat, but I don't like to get ink on it or anything. Get it straight. Somehow I've gotten ink on my hand. Get this pretty much in the middle. I like to do my words and everything before I put everything together so if I make a mistake I can either turn the paper over or get out a new piece. Then we're just going to simply, I went ahead and did the flower first. 
when I put these down. And I didn't pop it up with a dimension or anything. I just used the model adhesive this time. But you could pop it up with a dimensional. I wanted to put the flower first so I could be sure that I didn't get the stem too high and the flower was going off the paper. Because that has happened before. So I have that. And now I want to put the stem on this mat because it's so skinny. I might miss with the mono adhesive a little. And it will just come right off my mat. See, it just wipes right up. And I have my paper towel here. And I'm going to fit my stem right there. And now we are almost done. The only thing we need left is, again, I was going through my drawer of my embellishments, and I found these. And I thought, oh, that looks so pretty in the middle of the flower. I'm going to use the medium size one. I'm telling you, this pick -a tool I was bragging about it, but tonight it seems to be, like, not working in my favor. We lost that one. Here it is. There we go. Then we have a bombing blue card base that we're going to fold here. Put some mono adhesive on the back. And there we finished our third card for this evening. I'm so glad that you could join me. I hope that you like the cards I made, and if you decide to make some, I'd love for you to come back. I have a page called Nana's Stampin' Friends, where people can post cards that they've made that following my video, or cards they made not even looking at my videos, just so we can all share and get some good ideas. So look for that, or if you want, I can send you an invitation to the Nana Stampin' Friends, and we can see some cards that you're making. I wanted to one more time just say here's my hostess code if you wanted to put the $40 order in by March 31st and I will send you all the materials to make three cards and a post-it note. The only thing I can't send are stamped images but I made them so that the only stamped image on any of the cards is the greeting. So it should be pretty easy to uh, duplicate my cards with no without me sending the stamped images. Thank you, Char. I, I just really think this is just kind of like a simple but a nice card. You could make it in maybe like five to ten minutes if you were getting ready to go out the door. You, you had a birthday, you could change this to happy birthday. I like to do some just fast, quick ones. Well, I hope you all have a good evening. And join me Thursday for my 3D video. I'm, I'm going to show a, another kind of a pop-up card, an accordion card with the new Butterfly Brilliance set and paper. So, hope to see you then. Bye.